A welcome to everybody who's now joining us on YouTube uh, for today's lesson. Today's lesson is a very important one. Um, and it goes to a heart of what can happen to people um, when they're at the rank I'm at currently, right? And I know I I say that not because, oh, you know, some people who are lesser than me have this problem. I had this fucking problem for a long time. <laughs> so, um, you'll be in a game, and we'll go ahead and open up the client to give you guys a little bit of a preview of what we're talking about here. You'll be in a game, you'll be doing pretty well yourself, you'll be fed, and as the game goes sour, and as, like, the scoreline becomes ridiculous overall for the team, you'll still end with a decent scoreline. Air quotes, decent, right? But compared to the situation, you'll be by far the best scoreline. And there was a point in the game where you were really fed. So it, the inclination, I feel the urge there is to be like, oh, what a shitty team. I just got to hit, hit go the go button again and try and find myself a better team. That inclination can, it, there's not no situations where that's the case. But a lot of the time, and I would argue the vast majority of the time, that's actually not the case. And in this situation, we were Skarner. And as Skarner, there's already a problem with us having all those skills. So we're going to hop right into the replay here. Oops, let's open up our draw tool so we can actually draw on the screen here. I think this is, let's see if it's showing up. Is that showing up for you guys? Nope. No, it's not. Uh, hold on. We're still booting into the replay here, so we have a quick second to switch on over to here. We have to reset that like every time. Sometimes we don't, but pretty much every time we do. Um, so we're going to hop into this replay, and I want us to go into it with the mindset. We usually wait, we review the entire game, and we see what lesson naturally comes out of it. But I can tell you right now, the lesson for this game, and you can start focusing on it right now, is who you want that kill gold to be on. Because kills are a way to accelerate you in levels. Aside from the pressure it creates around the map, aside from the ability to take better team fights, it accelerates your build path. Actually, we do need to talk about this really quickly, so hold on. <laughs> Before that, kills accelerate your build path, and it accelerates your levels. So, I want to keep in mind, what are we getting when we get kills as Skarner? We're getting more gold and we're getting more levels, right? Aside from the map presence. So, is that useful to us? Let's watch and find out. We had an interesting start here. Um, let me switch right on over to our vision. Oops, that's not us. <laughs> um, we saw that they were invading. So I decided to go ahead and press in. I was waiting to see if we could have a ward to see if they backed off. Seeing none, I go for a, a shrine grab. And then I immediately uh, look to leave after dropping a ward. And of course, I drop it to make sure I have vision of the shrine, so I know who's there. It was just Riven, so when I cap this one, I feel a little bit more free to hang around. And I'm not quite sure if they're still here looking to start blue. But given that Maokai has a little bit of vision here from the sapling, and he himself is checking this out and about to recap, I feel confident enough to just start our red. And if there was an invade happening... Like, we would know about it, and then I could just rotate right back over to their blue and get a full clear just by clearing this half of the jungle. So that's a good start, a good adaptation. It's hard in situations like that to know exactly the right way to play, and we actually ended up being able to just full clear our jungle. And I didn't in-game notice any confirmation, yeah, from, their, from the ward there on where their jungler is, so... Good, I wasn't missing anything there. <laughs> um, I pop over using the uh, blast cone just to make sure they didn't like start here and then transition over late. And they didn't, so we're able to grab this just fine. Look for a gank here mid. And that's because Lulu, this is unfortunate that that happens right as we hit pause, but um, Lulu doesn't have many escape tools aside from her whimsy, but that just makes her move a little bit faster. And I, my W makes me move a little bit faster. So that's basically matched. And Fizz is really low. 
But if I can get in here, come in on this flank like I'm doing, it gives her a really poor retreat path because I still have a positive angle to close distance faster than she can create it. And I have a stun from my E. And if I can get the stun off, sure, I don't have six yet to suppress her, so Fizz is 100% safe. But if Fizz just like stays out of range and bait and waits till she's about to die and then goes in for the last bit of burst, we might be able to kill her without losing anyone here. Unfortunately, I'm not able to get the stun out quickly enough, so she gets her full trade off on Fizz, burning her... Her ignite was already down, actually. So, I think it's just from placing the... Okay, yeah, it was from placing the uh, picks onto Fizz, and then she can just glitter lance anywhere, and it'll basically just hit Fizz no matter what. Um, so that's how she finished off Fizz. So this one wasn't possible to give over, and seeing that Udyr is flashing here, it's really important for us to actually make sure that we finish that kill. That's actually wrong. It was able. As you'll notice, let's actually click on Lulu so we can see the, see the note here as it's happening, right? This goes in right here. See that Ignite is burning. And, like, she still has it on her. Still has it on her. And then I get her with the Q. It's possible, it's possible she wouldn't have made it out. And since Udyr is here, and it wasn't like absolutely free, I think Q in here was okay to secure it just to make sure we got the kill. But that is only one of the instances. Let's keep an eye out for that and see what we can make happen. And this is just funny here. Like, he just happened to be in range of the turret right there. And that. That's just unfortunate for him. He got stunned up in turret range, so <laughs> that's that's nice. And that kill couldn't have gone anywhere else. So we try not to push that wave as much as possible, so Fizz can have it frozen in an ideal location. Look to go around the map to get Scuttle. Just grab the speed shrine. Maybe rotating bottom side would have been a little bit better, but I didn't know that the Scuttle was already down. So I come here, start this because it's in range of my shrine. And then look for a clear, and the wolves did spawn in time perfect. And that'll put me in the right side of the map here, so I can be in range for this game. Oh, that went way too fast. <laughs> so we just take the blast gun right over. Alright, seeing that they haven't moved defensively let yet, lets me know that this isn't warded. So I'm able to not W just yet, because I still not... Maybe just now I'm popping into vision. Now I'm definitely in vision, so. I wait to make sure I can land the equal. Try and hit the stun on her. To keep her rooted. And I start retreating this way just in case she was able to take the lantern. Luckily she wasn't. How did we get that kill? That's what I want to know. Because that definitely was when we tried to give over. Maybe if we just hover like this. Do I have any passive damage on her? I don't think so. I don't think I have any passive damage from me on her. Maybe it's... Yeah, I just don't know how I got the kill there. That's unfortunate. So we did try and hand that over. Okay, so that, that wasn't necessarily a misplay. That's just... Oh, it was the red buff. It was the burn, I bet. I bet it was the red buff burn. So again, that's unfortunate. And this is a funny moment here where Thresh like, just whittles at my shield as I take that control room for free um so that's a little unfortunate uh that red buff got it but we tried to give that over and again we try to position as far this way as possible to give us the best flank unfortunately again fizz is really low so he's at risk of dying in this especially because she has six now so maybe seeing that she had six i should have just left this lane and not even come here because fizz is going to fight we learned from the last gank that Fizz is going to fight if I'm here, right? Um, so maybe I shouldn't encourage that. Maybe I should have, after getting Scuttle, like, gone and cleared Gromp and then backed because this is, like, such a deficit that without my ultimate available, I'm not sure that I can, like, make that net. Uh, make close that deficit is what I should say. If you get the stun to start it off, the Whimsy doesn't hit Fizz, which is nice, but then she has Ignite up again, so she just owns Fizz with the Ignite, and the last proc of Thunderlords is actually what kills her. 
And we are able to finish off that kill here, but that was uh, fairly lucky. This is just unfortunate for Udyr. It looks like from his level and from the CS differential... Well, the CS differential, he's been farming fine. It's just we've been getting kills, I guess. Um, but just from the level differential... And seeing me hit 6 off of that, he should know that I didn't ult and I have it available. So I can just pull him into turret range here. Didn't pull it until like the last bit of time to give Maokai as much time as possible to get here, which I think was the right play. Um, we could have given that over to Maokai. Man, we're already 5-0. and Fuck. Maybe this wasn't the point of this lesson. Shit. All right, all right, well, we'll see where this lesson goes. Giving it over to support isn't usually the right thing to do, but honestly, in this situation, I'm already fed to all hell. 4-0 and 5-0 has basically no difference to me. Um, but Malachi getting him a kill help, will help him be able to get, like, this a nice back timing right now and, like, Maybe it'll get a sight stone so we can get more control over the vision to make this a really safe lane for Jinx, who almost became somebody who could carry us. So maybe my instinct was to just take this without thinking, but maybe you, it's important to take into account like where I'm already at and where the rest of our lanes are and say, okay, getting a kill anywhere to this bot lane is probably more helpful than having it on me. So that might have been correct. Look for a last bit of the clear before we go back. Get a little bit more gold and have a nice like route through top. Waiting on the last bit for an item. Do okay, there we go. Um so Nars is exhausted now. So he might have some time to serve him. At this point, like Top looks like the most possible to go in our favor, especially after Fizz dies there. So I'm trying to, I think trying to focus on top and make as many plays top as possible is the right thing to do. Now I definitely made a mistake in this game, right? So as I'm going in, this is already control warded. So it's right to try and stay out of vision as long as possible. Getting that W, Maybe I could have held off slightly longer to get more value, but I'm going to flash anyway, so that's fine. I think flash ulting here is fine. But the problem is, at the end of your ult, that's going to be an annoying noise to hear. Okay, good, it stopped. At the end of your ult as Skarner, so right now I'm heading this way, and you'll notice relative to where I'm positioned, Riven's like a little bit of distance from me. So if instead at the end of my ult right here, I had turned to start going this way, it actually pulls Riven around, so Riven would be placed right here. And then that'll keep me relatively right here, so I can throw my E through her, and then get my stun off immediately, and almost chain my, my own CC internally. I can't E while I have my R turned on, but I can E immediately after and then auto to proc the stun. So I could have chained my CC better, and I could have placed her a little bit more optimal, so... Because right here, compared to right here, is much closer for her to try and all in Nar and finish off that last bit of health. She can all in me two times over and won't kill me, but she can kill Nar here if he doesn't go Mega. As we saw, okay, so I get her right there. It would have been nice if she was right here and I was right here. Right? Because as we see what happens... She immediately goes all in on Nar, and right before he goes Mega, she wipes him out. And sure, I still land my E, and I run over to proc it as soon as I can, but as soon as I proc it, Nar's already dead. So I can't... I, that was definitely a misplay by me, and I think we just wind up not getting this kill entirely. Yeah. And actually, I think I wound up trying to overstay fighting for it, and die here to Udyr and Riven, yeah, which I did. So that's really bad. So that's really bad. I could have not only not given a kill there, but I could have gotten a kill to Nar if I had used my ultimate placement a little bit better with that micro. 
So that's a little unfortunate. Again, I haven't been using any of my kills to control presence around the map. We did get a flash here from Zaya. Not really that important to analyze because she flashed away. Um, this has been an Infernal Drake for six minutes now. With that many kills on me, I should be pressuring the hell out of that Drake. Risking me to fight. I do ult. And again, this is another instance of me not pulling her. And then positioning her so she would be right here and I would be right here and then this E hits immediately which gives a slow until I stun her then she would be stunned right here that's completely different from where she is now and I don't think I even complete the stun on her yeah because Thresh is able to flay me Thresh would have had to flay me this way to get distance created but he probably still would have flayed me that way just to try and push me up the lane away from her and I probably still could have got the stun off the kill there. So that was two missed opportunities because of my ult micro. And that might actually have been more impactful at the end of the day than trying to get the kills over. Perhaps it's just missed opportunities for my micro. I do give the blue over to Fizz because blue doesn't mean shit to me aside from like the cooldown reduction on my ultimate. And again, looking at the kill line, this still has a lane to be seemingly the most potential because he does already have a kill do proc the stun don't have ult ghost can't really make it happen unfortunately lose here but i get away that's fine seeing jinx get that double kill that should be my go button to immediately rotate to this dragon and just camp bot because jinx is a late game hyper carry so if we can accelerate her at all, we should. And just being there will give her a dragon control. So, okay, maybe it was right to clear these wraiths along the way. But then rotating back this way is positioning for a gank on mid. What I should have done is said, fuck this scuttle. I'm going right here. So right now I could be doing wolves. Then I'm getting shrine. And then I actually go tomps. So I could have gotten wolves, either be doing gromp, or be well on my way to participating in this fight here. Maybe that fight was doomed from the start. But I would have at least been in position somewhere where more impact could be made. Because here I even ult and pull her into turret and I still don't get a kill. So this is like not a lane where I can make anything happen. Riven is like too far ahead. Her shield gives her too much sustain for me to be able to burst her out. On my own, certainly without Nar, I have no hope. So I don't think, I think it's a waste of my time. And I just, that was just bad. I remember that. I just wasn't paying attention. I had an alarm go off on my phone. And I just lost concentration there. So, okay. Nar does, doesn't get the kill there. But that's another kill. Another kill on a Jinx, right? Look at that. This is the lane I need to be at, right? Okay, maybe be here for that. But now we need to, like, always be wherever Jinx is. The lane phase is pretty much over. Okay, great. Ah, yeah. Okay, that was definitely... I think that was the time where I could have given the kill over and I just didn't. So, okay. I say you're dying no matter what, and I ult her to make sure that, like, she's suppressed while it's happening. That last Q is what took it. There was no reason for me to hit the Q there. I guess it was because I was afraid she was going to come out of it and, like, take the lantern. So I just wanted as much damage as possible. But that's ridiculous. Like, Jinx has plenty of damage. She was going to kill her, even if she took the lantern. Like, during the travel time, when she's right here, Jinx can be hitting her with her auto attacks and finish her. So I could have given, given that kill over. That's the first real instance where it was really clear that, okay, I should have given that kill over. The rest of them seem like instances where I should have just played the micro stuns or better. And finally, I'm throwing down a control board. I was sitting on two control boards forever, too. And again, it's just not having proper... Uh, Transitioning my lead to meaning presence on the map. 
I am able to make it out of here alive, and I waste a lot of their time, which is really nice. But unfortunately, everyone's dying in the meantime, so it didn't really matter. And I still didn't make it out of here. That's good micro with the shrines, but fortunately, it doesn't really matter too much. And I think from here, we just sort of lose the game. <laughs> this, this deficit becomes more than we can handle. And that was a poor choice on my part. I'm so low, I greeted for that because I had. I don't even think Ult was available actually. So they do wind up salvaging a kill on that, but that was just poor play. If I had instead been focused on getting presence on this part of the jungle, then we could have maybe made something happen there on their own and then rotated over to Rift Herald and gotten Rift Herald right before Baron spawned. So then we would have a good amount of time with Rift Herald to pull attention away from the Baron area or from the Dragon area. Yeah. I just don't think I'm doing the jungle roll overall justice here. Sure, I almost got out there, but... I just didn't really provide us anything. Giving all those kills to me didn't really get us anything. So I wasn't providing us huge control around the map. I was trying, I was ganking a decent amount, but I wasn't like leaving a trail of wards in my wake. Which I took the right smite to be able to leave wards, but I mean look at this, we just don't have any control of the jungle. Sure we have a little bit of ward coverage, but certainly not all because of me. A lot of that is not how I can we just get caught and die here? Yeah. Alright, we're actually gonna call it early because I think the rest of this is just like... I mean, there's some skirmishing happening, but that's pretty much all zero, right? That's just a slow death after that one. Okay, so that's un... I think that's unfortunate. I think that brings... I think that means the lesson actually wasn't as much about giving kills over as it was trying to better use my ultimate to micro. Because if I had kept getting those last two kills, maybe those lanes would have snowballed a little bit more in our favor. And maybe, because those team fights at the midpoint of that game were actually fairly winnable for us if they had just gone a little bit better. And if I had not just run in a couple times, those were just some mistakes. Um, but I think that ult management will actually show really quick, just, just for clarification purposes. Really quick, hopping in the practice tool. Don't even need a bot. My brings ugly it's all about, um, this is installing my face, right? Yeah. It's all about, with Skarner, that pivot right at the end of your ultimate duration, right? As you're walking and pulling them, you have to start walking back towards where you came and then it actually pulls them further. And then it'll put you in a really nice position because your E's missile speed is actually fairly slow. And when it hits them, it slows even more. So you wanna make sure it connects with them first before hitting any other target. So pulling them as far out of like a group of things is important. And putting them in a position where they then have to walk through you means they're gonna close the gap between you and them so that E hits even quicker. So we're gonna go ahead and put enough levels in to get our ult. We don't even need other abilities. Um, we actually do need our E. Okay, let's get them all, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, and where's our, we'll go, here's fine. Where's our Teemo? Teemo, Teemo, Teemo. What, where is he? Oh, here he is. Enemy target dummy. Okay. So if we ult and then turn back. Like that was a little poor. Oh, let me get the instant. So like I am getting roughly a, the same amount of travel time as if I just pulled the entire time. Except at the end there, like I'm in a position for if they have to walk through this way, they're going to gap close my own E for me. So when I throw this missile out, they'll then walk like right here, trying to get past me, if say this was their base. And if they're doing that, then I get to just hit them 
like in this position, slightly down. And even with that new bar, that was like perfect. <laughs> with that new bar too, let me just get more mana. Um, you can see how long the suppression is lasting on them. But I can even see as I ult here, the last little bit, that last little bit, that's when I start walking back the other way. So that's the trick, I think, with the micro, is to do that turn right as that suppression gauge is ending. And it displays it so nicely now after the last patch. I just gotta make better use of that, I think. So, an important lesson, if we're gonna whip out Skarner, I do bring out Skarner a fair amount when I need just somebody who can like force fights and be a tank <laughs> in the front line and accentuate any like pick potential we have if we have assassins. I do bring him out a fair amount. And if I'm gonna do that, I need to be mechanically sound at his ultimate because his ultimate kind of is what Skarner is about. Um, so that's an important lesson I think. It wasn't as much about trying to give those kills over because again, the thought was, you know, we're going to accelerate our build as Skarner into what more tank? That doesn't seem helpful. But we didn't actually have that many opportunities to give kills over. What the opportunities we missed was continuing to get kills on our team. Not necessarily on ourselves, but just for our team because we were mismanaging our micro on our ultimate. So I think that's today's lesson. Hopefully anybody who plays Skarner out there um, sees this and if you didn't know that little trick you did now you do or if you are just doing that already now you know the importance of that and uh, I think we could have really made some better plays that might have been a winnable game if we had just done that a little bit better and again not made silly mistakes afterwards but anyways that wraps it up for today's lesson